I had a great time building this United States type set. And it's interesting, I didn't even know there was such a thing as type coins as a as a segment of the hobby till I worked in a coin shop. It doesn't have the extraordinary rarities like the, the, the coins from the 1790s. However, it's pretty comprehensive from the 19th century all the way to today. And what I loved about this book is I learned about all the denominations that exist now, but maybe more importantly, the things that don't exist anymore and I found kind of weird. SD Bullion is giving away a monster box of 2024 Tree of Life silver coins. Sign up today at sdbullion.com slash sweepstakes. Hey, what's up? Morning, Silver Dragon. Good morning, Harry. Morning. morning, Adrian. And we got some more of the crew here today. Morning, Silver Dragon. What's up, Brandon? Morning, Silver and Dragons. Brandon, too. We got a couple of Brandons here today. And it's actually going to be a fun day because we got a, a comment from Indivisible Man. <laughs> and he wanted to see your guys' collections. So in the last video, we told people to comment what they want to see in the next video. And I did a poll, and in the poll, it won by a wide margin. I think 43% of people wanted to see the collections. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's have some fun. Yeah, let's have some fun. Who wants to go first? Brandon. All right. <laughs> the way I collect is really on eye appeal mostly. This is kind of random, but I've been really drawn to proofs okay. lately. So I have a, a proof uh, mercury dime here that um, I liked the bit of toning that was on it and I thought it was really, really beautiful, really, and that's what drew, drew me to, to purchase it. And I can turn it over, there's even some toning on the back. Oh, wow, look at that. So safe to say I'll probably add a few more to my collection. And then we have a, a proof V nickel, which I just really love the look of it. Night and day difference in appearance, in my opinion, to the standard uh, V nickels. So when you're trying to find stuff to buy, you just sort of pick what is interesting to you, what you like, yeah. and you just, you go with that. Yeah. Like everybody who works with us, Brandon started out as a customer and he always had an eye for quality and wasn't afraid to trade something in that he wasn't in love with anymore for something that he liked better. Mm -hmm. So we did, we did a number of nice trades and you know, he would put a, a coin that wasn't to his liking anymore towards something else. Mm. So that's kind of the classic way when you collect is to be constantly upgrading your holdings. And Brandon was an excellent example of that as a customer. If I don't like a coin, I get it out of my collection really quick. And so that's why my collection is pretty small because I want quality over quantity. So that's kind of where I'm focusing. Uh, the last thing I brought in, it's a eight real from 1814 from the Lima Mint. Um, Peru. Uh, it actually came in the shop and got it graded and it came out at mid state 63. A really, really nice example of an old silver dollar sized coin. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is probably one of the prized pieces of your collection, huh? Yeah, it's probably the nicest one <laughs> right now. So yeah. That's what I have today and it's slowly growing still. So. Yeah. Well, hey, that's a great way to collect. You find what you like and you trade up for be better things as you go. And you have some wonderful pieces here. And thank you for thank showing you. us. Yeah, thanks. All right. I appreciate it. Uh, why don't we move on to Brandon too, huh? <laughs> we'll do the Brandons first. Uh, can you talk about what you have here? So I hit my goal of 40 ounces of silver. There it is, 40 ounces of silver. And I started stacking this year in March. I'm a brand new stacker. I'm young. I'm only 25. I had not heard of stacking my whole life. None of my family members have done it. Coming across some YouTube videos, your channel oh, specifically. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> and I knew Bill as a friend as well. I began to build my own silver stack and I'm also telling my family about it. So I'm glad to hit my first goal. Yeah, so you mostly focus on bullion, obviously. Yeah. And we got a nice assortment here, you know, some rounds, bars, eagles. And what's your next goal from here? My next goal from here, I would say 100 ounces. I think that's a, a pretty good goal to try and hit, but you can only put back so much. I have a family, so 
I still need some fiat to get around these days. You yeah, know? for We're sure. Not. But it's good for savings. It's good to hold on to because I see it as a hedge against inflation. And I'd like to put as much savings as I can back into it instead of saving fiat. Yeah, well, you got a great start. And uh, I started with silver. I think that's the best place to start. It's the easiest thing to buy and you can get a nice assortment like you've done here. I think uh, maybe some constitutional silver in your future, huh? Get some uh, uh, 90%? Think, I think I'm gonna start stacking some constitutional. Um, I've gone pretty hard on the bullion and on some sovereign coins, but I think stacking some fractional silver is a good way to go as well. Yeah, and then maybe eventually down the line, start getting into a little bit of gold, huh? Yep, um, once I get um, a good amount of savings, I think I should put some into gold. I think you should have both. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, hey, great start, Brandon. Thank you. Yeah, nicely done. And Bill walked in I did. as we were filming the video <laughs> and you brought in some of your collection. Can we take a look at it? Sure thing. I I don't know, maybe I'm a prima donna. I brought like a whole bunch of coins. <laughs> you brought a lot of stuff, which we wanted to see what you collect and also hear why you collect it. So walk us through what you brought in. Okay, first and foremost, I brought something that's not part of my core collection at all. I only have one of these. It's just a bust half, an XF40. And the reason I brought that, it's not because I collect bust halves, is because it ex it's an example of something I bought simply because I liked it. And that's to say it's okay that if a coin catches your eye and you just like it and it's not part of the rest of your collection, it's okay. There's no rule against it. Like, right. no one's going to fire you from yourself, you know? Like, <laughs> I mean, so you can, you can buy things for your collection just because you like them for no other reason. What I do collect more specifically is uh, Swiss Cantons. Late 1700s, early 1800s Swiss Cantons. I've got an 1818 Vaud in MS66. This is a half Batson. I think this is either the finest known or second finest known. And then I have the 1813 and the 1819 of that same Canton on 66. So those are, those are coins that um, I haven't looked at the populations on these, but if there's another one, there's maybe only one other in that grade. And what do you like most about this coin in particular? Well, I like the toning on these, the finish. Um, they're they're Billon, so to have them in this condition and not black is it's exceptional. Yeah, and that shield is pretty cool too. Wow. All right, what else have we got? So I've got a, a 1930 Switzerland two wrapping. Uh, it's a specimen. And 67 red, and that's the that's the finest known. It's tied with one coin at PCGS for the finest known in the world on, the, on for that piece. Wow, top pop. Yeah, this is a Bern Canton. Bern is just German for bear, hmm. and so the capital Canton, <laughs> the capital city of Switzerland is literally just called Bear. A bear. If you translate it. Literally. Okay. So there's a bear on the coin, and this is a two and a half Batson. Yeah, I'm getting a good shot of the bear there. That's gorgeous. So that's a European brown bear. And I'm noticing kind of a theme with your collection here. You like to have sort of the top yeah. condition of these coins in the world even. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and that's, that's totally possible with certain countries if you're one of the only people that collects it. <laughs> yeah, um, there you so, go. So I have, I have another burn piece. This is a one Batson from 1818. This has maybe a, a nicer, easier to see bear. Oh yeah. Good detail, look at that. And so this is the second finest known in the world. So you might be wondering like, well, where would the fine, where would you find the finest known? Well, I would imagine right here. Right, so this is the 60, <laughs> this is the, that was the 66, this is the 67. And this is tied with one other coin for the finest known in the world. And so you might be wondering, well, who would own that coin? Yeah, who would own that coin? It's right here. It's the finest known for the 1818 burn one Batson. Wow, and look at that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have figured? <laughs> yeah. I was over Lucerne. This is in southern Switzerland. Canton. It's an Alpine canton. And this is the 10 Batson. Anyway, so this is the finest known by two grades in the world. Oh, wow. And, uh, for that type. Well, you have an awesome collection here. And it's kind of cool to be able to say, look, I have the best in the world. There's <laughs> yeah. no other better coin than this. Yeah. I mean... Unless one comes out of a safe deposit box in Switzerland, they don't they don't do a lot of plastic over there. Yeah. So just so, because it's yeah. not in PCGS population doesn't mean it doesn't exist. That's actually one of the risks in collecting Swiss coins or any European coin if you're chasing top pops is that over there they don't really put it in plastic. And so, so there may be exist. ten coins that you don't know about that are equal to yours and you're just you're bragging about something that's not real. Yeah. But um and then last but last but not least, I have a Napoleon five franc. It's 1809, wow. and uh, 
I bought that one just because it's gorgeous and uh, obviously a famous historical figure. Yeah, that's a cool piece right there. All right. Well, lovely collection here, Bill. Thanks for showing it off. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to make our way down here. We got uh, two more members of the team, at least two more. I don't know if Richard's going to show <laughs> up, but uh, do you want to go, Adrian? Sure. Yeah. See what you brought in. This is fun. This is kind of a different video, huh? Indeed. Oh, my goodness. A little, little variety. Yeah, definitely a variety. So walk me through. What are we looking at here? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we'll start with Libertad's. It's my favorite silver bullion coin to collect. This one here is a one kilo. So um, the Mexico Mint, Banco de Mexico, they make you know, very limited quantities of the Libertads. Yeah. Um, especially when you get to these uh, heavier weights of the kilo. I mean, if you're going to stack silver, you know, I, I stack my silver in Libertads. And it's just, just the way that I do it. And you prefer that size? You like the bigger ones? Um, not necessarily. I mean, on the Libertads, I mean, it's just a beautiful piece. Look how thick it is, yeah, too. I mean, a, it's a thick coin. That is crazy. It's a lot of silver. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, but yeah, Libertads, you know, one of the things that I like to collect. Moving on to here is uh, my Mexico typeset collection. So it starts in 1905, and, um, you know, it has one of the type of coins. So the one centavo, two centavo, and, and so on. So every single type of coin that Mexico has put out will be in this album? Well, the, the type, yes. So it would be from 1905 and up, so being the centavos to the pesos and so on. So this would not include bullion? I mean, it won't include like the, the owns us. It's definitely, you know, the stuff that's circulated in Mexico. Okay, so every circulated coin. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah. And you have every spot filled. How long did that take to fill that? A couple years. Really? So, yeah. Well, it's. I lived in California for most of my life, so there's a lot of Mexican coins there, and it's fun to put these together because you have, you know, the typeset. Yeah. So you'd recommend to people who want to do something fun, something different, to maybe go for a certain typeset? Definitely. And if you can find a, a Mexican album to fill, which is pretty hard to find the Mexico typeset albums, I'd say go for it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's pretty inexpensive to do so, too. Really? I mean, some pieces are a little more than others, but... It's definitely fun. Okay. All right. Very cool. And we have uh, some more pricier items up here, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so this comes back to half stacking, half collecting, right? So I, I like Libertads. So this is the first year of the gold Libertads. And they made it in the one ounce, half ounce, and quarter ounce. And, um, you know, it just goes again to if I want to put some gold away, why not put some gold that I like? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. And it's kind of that balance of, you know, putting it away for investment or for whatever it might be a rainy day or something, but um, put, put away something that you like. The other here would be the Mexico Centenario, the 50 peso. And um, so they started making these in 1921. And again, it's another coin that can be considered bullion. But if you want to collect more than just for the bullion, you can collect it as a series. So or, one from every year. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's, these are just beautiful pieces. These, this would be a non-restrike because this one's a 1928. So when you say restrike, they made these more recently with the older dates yeah, on them? they're still making them today. Oh, really? Yes, the with, 1947 date. Okay, so if it's a 47, it's guaranteed to be a restrike or there are some that so aren't? There were some originals, but it's very hard to differentiate the originals from the actual you know, restrikes. Okay, so if you get a date that's not 47, it's original. Yeah, so I mean, it's still made by Banco de Mexico. So it's not that the coins are, you know, fake or anything. It's just they're still being struck to this day. It's more desirable for the different dates? Yes, the earlier dates, the non restrike dates, they definitely are. They always command a premium. And here's another cool piece. This is um, a Mexico Constitution medal. So it's the centennial of the Mexican Constitution, and it's the same weight as the Mexico 50 peso centenario. Oh, wow. Look so at that thing. They contain 1.205 ounces of gold and just a beautiful metal. I mean, that's the Chamber of Deputies of Mexico. Just very detailed, beautiful piece. And these got to be pretty rare too, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, pretty rare, definitely. I've never seen one before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fun to collect that kind of stuff. What about this one right here? Okay, man, moving on. So this is another thing that I like to collect. I like to collect the old holders. Mm. Um, so this one's a PCGS Rattler. This one here, it has a gold uh, CAC sticker. Yeah, look at that little sticker. It's usually green, huh? Yes. So CAC gives the gold sticker, they call it the gold bean, to certain coins that exceed the grading standards for CAC. So it's not top for the grade. It's actually a different grade. It's a higher grade. A higher grade than what's on the holder. Oh, wow. 
So if you and, ever see the gold sticker, that's like super Yeah, valuable. pick it up, especially on pre-33 gold. Wow. It's, it's very tough um, to get. I mean, you do see them around, but it's just, it's very cool since these are um, early PCGS holders. Yeah, okay. So you like the different holders. I see we have a variety of them up here. Yeah, yeah. So one thing to collect, you can collect old holders. And here's another example of an old holder. This is an Anax soapbox holder, so collectors call these. Just looks like a little soapbox, you know? It's and, so uh, small compared to the other holders. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it houses a beautiful coin too. It's a, a proof half dollar. And I mean, just, just a beautiful piece, the proof 62. Another piece here that I think it's pretty cool that you can collect too is stuff that has some type of significance to it. So this is recovered from the World Trade Center and it's you know dated 2001. So pretty cool that they're certified and you have a piece from that tragic event. Yeah, and this was actually the year that it happened too, yes. 2001. Mm -hmm. So it was brand new when it happened. Yes. And uh, so they were able to recover a bunch of different coins mm -hmm. from the rubble. Yes. And you can actually collect them. That's crazy. Yep. Another fun thing to collect too is uh, US type coins. And um, with the bust series, um, you can find different varieties. So it's something that I also like to collect, you know, bust type coins. They're just beautiful pieces. And there's, you know, books and everything that can teach you about the different types of varieties of um, type coins, especially the busts. Last but not least, there's also the Port silver that I like to collect. So Yeah, look at these. Uh, vintage port bars. I mean, that's a sunshine bar, beautiful piece. Is that sunshine mint? Mm -hmm. Wow, but it's like way back well, in the day. Well, sunshine mining at that point. Oh, interesting. Um, and you can see the back under very raw struck. Wow, look at that. Just probably hand stamped too. Mm -hmm. yep. Very cool. And then uh, we have a, a Foster, WH Foster bar. Uh, very rare type. This is what they call the bread loaf. You see the silver kind of pouring over. <laughs> yeah, like muffin top. Yeah. So yeah, very rare type. Uh, we have an Omega two ounce, and then the International Vaults. So another way you can stack some silver, definitely with a higher premium, but nonetheless fun. Yeah, and if you could find this stuff at bullion prices, oh yeah, pick snap it up, snap it up, definitely. <laughs> see any port, old port stuff? I mean, it's almost like a no-brainer to pick it up if you can get it re relatively close to spot. Yeah, what's this coin right here? Oh, we didn't this mention is just, that one. You know, one of my fun ones here. It's uh, 1901. It's an overdate uh, Mexican one peso. You see it mainly on the zero. The thing is with the Mexican man, they would strike, you know, different coins with different with the same die, so they would just repunch dates on them. Oh, okay. So you see that quite a bit on on Mexican uh, coins. Uh, even on some of the U.S. coins, because they would reuse dyes. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, cool pieces. Yeah, thank you. And it looks like you've obviously been collecting for quite a while here, Adrian. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you brought a nice assortment, and uh, this is kind of like the, uh, I think, I don't know if it was your wife who made the joke, but it was like, tell me you're Mexican without telling me you're <laughs> yeah, Mexican, definitely, right? Definitely, yeah. And it's, it's just, it's cool stuff to collect. And if you're going to put your money into something, why not put it into something you like? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. All right, well, you know who walked in? King Richard made it to the party. What's up? Good to see you. Good to see you. Did you bring in some coins that we could see, Richard? Uh, I actually have some coins here that you could see. I'll get a couple of them out for you. Okay, let's do it. Wow, so we have some platinum. That is the first platinum we've seen in a long time. <laughs> so US large set in an old PCGS holder. And then we have a Morgan Dollar gold PCGS holder with uh, a gold CAC sticker. Yeah, we just learned about the gold CAC sticker yeah, from Adrian. So this is at least a 64, but it could be a 65 or even higher. Yes. What would you think that would grade? Personally, probably more just a, a 65. It's a beautiful coin but i've seen ones where they're like sixes and sevens oh my goodness inside these old, old holders yeah so why have you collected these items here this one obviously because uh platinum and it's a inglehard in the original case with the certificate it even has the rusty staple you know people remove it from that because of things like that but it's like oh no gotta leave it in the original packaging I think somebody will appreciate that someday. <coughs> so this is worth more than an ounce of platinum because it's collectible. Yeah. It's just part of my small stack that could fit in my hand. But I was like, you know what? There's a lot of stackers on the 
channel I show off the one piece I like yeah. a lot out of there. And then um, US large cents, one of my favorite coins. It's like, well, look how big the penny used to be. And, you know, just another sign that inflation really ate away because now we use a zinc copper plated coin for the penny and it costs more to produce than it's worth. Yeah, not only did they make it smaller, but that wasn't enough. They had to change the metal composition because it was still too expensive. The dollar I got, not because of the, the gold cack, that definitely helped, but um, this is an 1899 New Orleans, and that was the uh, same date as the first silver dollar that was uh, given to me. I wanted to get this and this, this Rattler holder, and then we sent it off to CAC and it got a gold bean on it. I was like, yes. That's crazy. So it's a little bit of like nostalgia almost for that coin there. Yeah, definitely. Wow. All right. Well, you got some cool stuff here, Richard. I know you also have a lot of dragon coins and uh, Japanese coins that we've seen in other videos. And uh, it's always fun to see something different. So thank you for showing these off. Yeah. Thank you for giving right. me the opportunity. And I think we have one person left. We haven't seen their collection. The man himself. What do we got here, Harry? So here's the thing. Of all these guys, I have, I'm sure, the least impressive holdings, except maybe one piece. And that's because when, you're, when you become the proprietor of a coin store, whenever you're low on inventory, the collection's fair game. Sure. So that's what's happened to my collection. However, there are some things that are truly, I'd say, in the perma stack, in, okay. the, in the permanent collection that are too sentimental to get rid of for a variety of reasons. And maybe some of you out there, maybe the bills come due, maybe it's just time to buy something else, but there's something or things that you just don't want to part with. So let me start and I'll work my way backwards in time. This is a $1,000 note from 1934. It was given to me my, by my oldest friend, Dr. Jeff Dubin. He's a professor of econometrics at uh, USC down in L.A. And we collected coins together as, as boys. And he grew up and made something of himself and became a, a famous economist. And recently sent this to me just as a thank you for helping uh, his aunt and uncle uh, with a collection that I helped uh, dis dispose of for, for an estate. Um, certainly wasn't expecting anything, but it's absolutely gorgeous note. Wow, look and at that. A massively generous gift when you when you consider that you can't get one of these for less than what three thousand, Adrian? Yep. Wow. So that's the kind of guy Jeff is and so that's that's permanent. Yeah, that's cool. I get asked all the time, Do you have any thousand dollar notes? And I always think of this and think, No chance. <laughs> Not so, for sale. Yeah. So then can someone describe themselves as a Jew without saying so, like Adrian and his Mexican collection? And mine would be the coins of Palestine. Well, my dad collected the coins of Israel and was a subscriber to the Israel Mint, but I thought I'd go a little bit back further in time. Before Israel became a state, it was known as Palestine. It was a, a British protectorate, and there was a series of coins from 1927 to 1947 that I'm trying to complete. Actually, Richard's helped me at shows. He picks up something he thinks I need, and he's usually right. And um, slowly, I've been filling this over the past, oh, six, seven years. The coinage was based in mills or one thousandths of a pound. And there's, there's bronze and uh, nickel pieces, but also some silver pieces. Oh, wow. And some are quite rare, and I don't know that I'll ever actually complete this, but that's the the joy is the hunt and so i've i've put a good dent in this book oh, and yeah. like adrian said about the mexican type book i i've never seen another one like this uh this came in in a collection in the shop empty and so i had my coins just in flips but i was able to organize it in this beautiful book so that's my my uh most recent collecting passion this is a note that came into the shop. It's a hundred pruta from after Israel became a state, but just after, in the very, very early days. Wow, crazy. And then moving back in time, I had a great, great time building this United States typeset. And it's interesting, I didn't even know there was such a thing as type coins as a, as a segment of the hobby till I worked in a coin shop. 
the old days in, at Jonathan's Coin in the early 80s uh, down in LA, there was a customer who came in every Saturday. It was a young guy. He always had with him this book and his book was very worn on the edge because he carried it everywhere. And he was filling up his type book. And a type book, not unlike the Mexican type book, in fact, the same idea is one of every coin that's circulated in a particular country, in this case, the US, it doesn't have the extraordinary rarities like the, the, the coins from the 1790s. However, it's pretty comprehensive from the 19th century all the way to today. And what I loved about this book is I learned about all the denominations that exist now, but maybe more importantly, the things that don't exist anymore and I found kind of weird. For instance, half cents. That's not something that you'll ever see again in circulation. Oh yeah, look at that. Also, the series of two cent pieces. And I remember when Dr. Dubin got one of these as we were little boys and I thought, man, a two cent piece, this guy, I'll never catch him in terms of the quality of a collection. <laughs> we must have been about 10. <laughs> well, if you can do two, how about three? <laughs> Three cents, in fact, if you can do a three cent piece, why not do it two different ways? There was one in silver and one in nickel. No four cent piece though, huh? Not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but over time, when you have a typeset, another thing that's nice is once you fill all the holes or as you're filling all the holes, not unlike what Brandon said, is always trying to upgrade the quality. And so once in a great while, I'll pull something that comes into the shop and add it to the typeset though I really try very hard not to compete with the customers. They do come first. Mm. But I've, I've really just had a great time filling this book. There's the half dollars and quarters, and then, then you've got the seated dollars, the trade dollars. Oh, wow, look at that. Some of the classic commemoratives. Look at these right here. You're making me want to fill one of these books. I'm telling you, we sell these books now. Dansko has come off of back order yet again. Once they were back ordered for six years, but these books are available again for now. And so it's a great joy to get someone started on type collecting. Wow. In fact, I was such a nerd about all this that as I bought the coins, I would put the date and where I bought it. You know, Portland Coin Show or Beaverton Coin. And actually you see a lot of Beaverton coin or Victoria, BC. Beaverton coin and stamp was my favorite coin shop of all time. And this shop is based in large measure on how they were laid out and what they carried. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's just fun to see what I paid and over time and the dates and how many years it took to, to, to put a dent in this thing. So moving back a little further in time, in fact, a lot further in time, as I may have mentioned in other videos, I started collecting coins when I was seven years old. And our family was of very modest means. And so my books, like all my clothes, were hand-me-downs. Hand These two Lincoln Cent type books were my brother Eddie's, and he abandoned the hobby pretty early on. But I stuck with it. And my, uh, my mother used to let me go through her change purse. I could always take pennies that I needed. And once in a while, if I made a good case, I could take a nickel. But, <laughs> but the rest was for grocery money. So these books mean a lot to me. And one that I did complete was the Lincoln Cent Collection. Oh, wow. You can even that. see some of my early childhood handwriting. And, you know, I filled this from just looking through my change and my mother's little coin purse. And none of these coins here are extremely valuable but to you, I'm sure they have immeasurable There's nothing in value. here that I would say is worth over a dollar. Yeah, but it was fun, and uh, it really uh, got anyway. you interested in the hobby. Yes. Now, the tougher book for all of us is the, the 1909 to 1940. Yeah. And again, these were all found in change and in my mother's change purse. Not one of these was purchased. And a, a funny little story, my dad had a shoebox full of uh, Lincoln wheat scents. And one day he said, you can go through there if you want, and you can fill some holes in your book. I know you're having trouble with the earlier album. So I spent a whole weekend going through that book. And obviously I didn't fill every hole, but when I finished going through those thousands of coins, I brought them to my father and said, look, you know, look how many holes I filled. And he went like a laser beam to the 31S. Yeah, look and it's that. probably the worst 31S I've ever seen. But he said, Where'd you get a 31S? Yeah. 
I said, Dad, it was in the box. And he shakes his head like, I must have missed that. That's worth more than a dollar. Yeah, it's, it's a rough one, but he was shocked <laughs> that it was in the box. But he let me keep it, which was a nice memory. Wow. And I used to collect things like um, Austrian Tollers mm -hmm. and Mercury Dimes. And all of those things went by the wayside to become inventory for the shop. But these, these I'm sentimental about, so I'm sure one of my heirs will have to dispose of them someday because I can't do it. Well, there you go. Yeah. This was a fun video, Harry. Yeah, thanks for doing it. I, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed seeing what all the other guys have, too. Yeah. And I'm proud to say that some of their best treasures may have come from right here. <laughs> That's great. Well, we'll have to uh, come back and we'll look at your collections again at some point in the future and maybe see how they've grown. I, I would like that. All very right. Much. Thank you, Silver Dragon. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Yep, thanks. <laughs> thanks, folks. That was good. See ya. Yeah. We forgot to do Oliver. Can you show us your favorite coin? I got the, a pretty cool coin I'd really love to show you guys. Um, it's actually a 1909 VDB with the CAC sticker. With the CAC. Look at that. That's a rarity. Reverse right there. Smoking. Thanks for coming by, SD. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>